But then came nine o'clock, like Mussolini at Sabatino's, ordering the garlic bread. Cause he Whoa. was right down the road from Little Italy. Like Mussolini. Oh, come on, come on. Well, see, you got the f***ing tie in there, but you got Mussolini down the yeah. road from Little Italy. They kicked his head down the street. There's the tie-in. Well, and then they they fried it up and served it over at Sabatino's. Boy, I'll tell you, the, the f***ing Mussolini's head f***ing soup, it was excellent. No, you realize right there at the Baltimore Civic Center, Baltimore Arena, the f***ing Porter Paints f***ing Memorial Coliseum, whatever they fucking call it these days, is is like two, three miles from Sabatino's, from the whole Little Italy area. Every time we would go to Baltimore, and we didn't have to jump right back onto Crockett's plane and get the fuck out of there, we would go and have our Italian food, and then if we were getting on the plane, Flair started giving a hundred bucks to Freddie Floyd, the fucking pilot, and say, go get us a bunch of Sabatino. Forty years ago, a hundred dollars would get you a lot of Sabatinos. But anyway, yeah. we're back to Punk's but, interview. But when that food turned on you, it was sabotage. Oh, come on now. I was never saboteured by Sabatinos. It was it was merely a rumor. I think it it was actually the stuff I had at the airport earlier that day. Anyway, here comes CM Punk. He gets the big chance. He does the in-ring promo. He congratulates the new UFC welterweight champion whose name I could neither spell nor transcribe quickly enough. And then he did the promo to try to redeem his image from the loss at SummerSlam, which a good baby face is going to do, where he doesn't make excuses for it, but he instead finds something positive to begin as a motivation to still succeed in his goal, which is basically, I'm proud of myself because when I got hurt, they said it'd be I'd be out nine months and I made it back in five. Every time I get knocked down, I get back up, and I'm happy because I'm back. Even though I've started at the bottom before, I've gone back to the top, and my summer of hate has started, and I want round two. Man, I mean, what else are you going to say because he did lose the match? So as he's mea culpa and he's also said, I want round two with Drew McIntyre, immediately fucking Seth Franklin Rollins' music hits and punk it, and son of a... Eh, yeah. Which I thought was... Because everybody just stands there. Like they either expected it or... What took you so long? I gave you the cue 10 seconds ago or whatever, but somebody actually looked pissed off to be interrupted when they were in the middle of saying something. Is, it, is that just me? No, I don't think that was just you. What about you? What about me? Was it you just thinking it was just me? Was it me thinking that I was upset he was interrupted? Well, I was looking back to see if you were looking back to see if I was looking back to see if you were looking back at me. And I think it's a, it's a nice touch. And it was also a nice touch, as I pound my pen for emphasis on the desk and drive you out of your mind, that Seth came out with his game face on and semi-normal clothing that would be worn potentially by somebody on the street. I don't know what kind of neighborhood it would be, but it wasn't fucking over-the-top ridiculous because they're about to have a fight. And Seth just comes in after 10 years, it's time for me to put you in the dirt. And right as they're squaring off, you hear Drew McIntyre's voice. And the spotlight, and he's up in the bleachers where he's way away from them. And he's cutting a promo on them while they're still squared off looking at each other. But then Drew shows the bracelet, Punk's bracelet, and Punk at that, he fucking loses it and bails out and starts running up the stairs. 
and both of them are gone. And there's Seth standing in the ring with absolutely nothing to do. Before we go any further, Brian, would you like to comment, before we enter act two of this fucking play here, uh, would you like to comment on what had gone on up to that point? As I said the other day during the SummerSlam review, I can watch Punk and Drew McIntyre seethe at each other forever and be happy. It's great. It feels real because a lot of it is. It has brought out the best in Drew McIntyre. It's brought out the best in CM Punk. Rollins has been kind of the third wheel who has raided uh, his wife's closet. (laughs) But they did an angle here that was, I mean, we'll talk about it shortly. They did an angle here that was one of the best things he's done in a while. But with Punk and Drew, it's been the best feud in WWE in 2024. And uh, we were talking about on several of the recent shows, they've got all kinds of different ways that they can go. So they got this with Seth as the referee. And now, uh, as I said on last week's show, or the show we did last, not even a week ago, that now they can still have Drew and Punk in a rematch because it hasn't been spoiled. all the things they can do in a regular match, a singles match with a regular referee because Seth was involved. Now Seth is fixed to go off in another direction, apparently, but they still have yet to have Punk and Seth that they can have any time because people would love to see it. See, that's why I hated Seth as the guest referee there. To me, the way everything was built up, like Punk and Drew just had to kick the shit out of each other. And they did for like the first 30 seconds and then it became a wrestling match. Yeah, but and, it, it... Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. No, I mean, that's just my thing. I thought, based on how heated it's been, how personal it's been, Rollins being in the middle of it took away... I guess just took away from what I wanted it to be, because it's not like it's not working the way they've done it. But I thought that match... That's the only reason I was a little disappointed with that match. I thought that had to be like, you know, balls to the wall. Both guys hate each other. Both guys want to end each other. And I bet you that the next one will be more of that. But because this one, the referee got in the way and they couldn't do it. Because if they'd have done it the first time, then what would they do in the second one? Cut off another fucking arm with a chainsaw? So people still want to see him fight, but get goddamn well, get... Going they opposite wanted, order. They, you, they you, wanted to well wait they wanted to see Seth be the referee because they figured, oh, this will be wild, and now they well, get that fucking Seth out of there. We want a regular referee and stipulation or whatever, and they want to see it again. Well, that the only way it would have worked is if he went the other way and they had a match where it got two out of hand in the first match, and now you need a special guest referee for the second match. Well, yeah, but then we'd have seen the first match. Yeah. And then the second match would have been more boring than the first match. So this way, the second match would be more exciting than the first match. Where is the second match? It's in Germany? Well, we don't know yet. I don't believe they said specifically. (laughs) Punk said, I want round two. I don't remember uh, Drew saying, well, we're goddamn going to exactly have it on such and such a date. But nevertheless, 